Welcome to the European CR 2021 London Bulb session of uh, new vascular therapy in collaboration with biosensors. Uh, my name is Raul Moreno from the University Hospital La Paz, Madrid, Spain. Uh, it's my pleasure to share this session with Julian Guider and Matthias Golfrun. And the objectives of this session are uh, first to learn about the single center experience of the first 100 patients treated with Allegra. Second, to see clinical outcome data on over 20, 250 cases treated with Allegra from a European multicenter registry. And third, to focus on the outcomes with Allegra in BALF in BALF, in BALF applications. Uh, so um, now it's my pleasure to introduce Julian Guider, my friend Julian Guider from the Medical School of Hanover, Germany, uh, that is going to present their experience, uh, the experience with uh, the multicenter registry. Thank you, Julian. So let me tell about the uh, key features and what makes the difference of the Allegra valve. It's actually a super analog design with a bovine leaflet uh, based on a nitinol frame. You can choose from three valve sizes and you can treat only from 18 to 28 millimeters. And this valve has six radio pack gold markers for orientation when you implant. What's a nice feature, it has this pole movement to reduce leaflet stress which probably helps to make it more durable. It has a brow-like shape, which is more important for wealth and wealth procedures and for small only, would you obviously don't touch the aortic vent. You have 12 millimeter of ceiling area and the very flexible catheter is a 15 French and it goes to an 18 French sheet. And it has a squeeze to release mechanism, which makes it easy to implant. And when we now start to video you can show or you can see how this um, 3 de deployment works you position the valve and then you open the perma flow and then now you have time to see if you're in a right position we do it in rapid pacing to open the inflow release and check then for optimal position and then we finally detach the valve so this is our experience in nearly 100 cases which we did at the Hanover Center and we started in May 20, 2017 and we had a really even in our learning phase high technical and device success rate both higher than 95 percent really low procedural mortality um, and only a mortality of two percent um, after 30 days low stroke rates and what's appealing we had a very low pacemaker rate of 9.3 percent so we can say you have a high success rate and have safe implantation with low pacemaker rate. You can see that we get really good reduction in gradients uh, in native wells. We had a post implant um, gradients of 7.1. And uh, in wealth and wealth cases, we had a post implant gradients around 30.8. And we also have uh, acceptable PBL rates 60% had none or trace, uh, around 40% had a mild PBL rate after implementation, and only in one case we had a moderate PBL rate. So we have a really good experience with this wealth, and especially in small only, we like to implant that. And I thank you now for uh, the chance to present our data. And um, Raul, if you have any questions, please start. Thank you very much, Julian. Um, you have uh, shown uh, good, good results, and I have a question uh, for you. Uh, how important uh, for you is the hemodynamic performance of this valve, or in general, of, of TAVI in, the, in your daily practice? Well, that's an interesting question. I, I think it's especially important in a patient with small annually, small women, where we uh, want to achieve um, good um, low gradients and good um, wealth opening areas which I think with this um, Allegra valve we can uh, achieve this especially very good because of its super, uh, super annular design. Thank you Julian, thank you very much. Now we are going to move to the to the other uh, colleague, uh, Matthias uh, Goldfrum from the, the Cantor Hospital of Lucerne, Switzerland, and he's going to show us uh, the, the experience uh, they have. Uh, the, please, could you tell us uh, the results of your of your registry? Yeah, thank you very much for the nice uh, introduction, Professor Moreno. So um, 
I would like to share our experience um, from our multi-center registry. So we set up uh, this registry to gain more insights into clinical and echocardiographic outcomes um, at 30-day uh, follow-up. And uh, we enrolled consecutive patients from four European centers, um, from uh, Lucerne, from Finland, Spain, and from the Netherlands. And um, we started um, this registry in 2015, or well, we started to enroll the patients um, from 15 onwards. And in total, we included 255 patients. And the population represents actually a typical TAVI population in the low to intermediate risk, um, surgical risk category. So we have truly severe AS, 5% um, for valve and valve procedures, 3% um, bicuspid valves. So the pre-dilatation was um, performed in 90% in of the cases. Um, the Allegra models 23 and 27 were used in two thirds of the cases. Um, the valve was actually deployed um, under rapid or semi-rapid pacing in eight from 10 cases. The immediate procedural success was um, high at 96%. Post dilatation was performed in 30% um, of the cases roughly. If we look at the echo outcomes, um, it mirrors actually Professor, Professor Witter's findings. The aortic valve area increased from 0.7 to 2.2 square millimeters. The mean gradient was reduced from 47 to 7 millimeter um, of mercury. Um, and, the, and, and the moderate or more than moderate power leak was prevalent in 3.3% of the cases. So the clinical outcomes according to VARC2 criteria are summarized here. The low overall mortality um, is, was seen with 1.2%. Overall stroke was 2.4%. And a new permanent pacemaker was implanted in 2.8% of the cases. And um, additionally, we found adequate symptom relief according to the assessment of the New York Heart Association functional classification. So to summarize, actually, our findings are concordant um, with small registries in the past with the Allegra device. The device can be implanted with a very high success rate. And the Allegra shows a very good hemodynamic data and profile, acceptable PVL rates, low event rates with regard to procedural complications and complications during the follow-up. So we are, of course, all eager to see the longer term data. We hope that the promising hemodynamic data and the design features, such as the flexible poles that we just mentioned, um, can translate into a favorable long term outcome. And I'm quite um, keen to hear about Professor Moreno's uh, data in valve and valve patients. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matthias. Uh, you have shown excellent results, uh, uh, consistent with the results of, uh, that Julian showed us before, uh, especially in clinical events. Uh, you have uh, presented even a mortality rate of 1.2% at, at 30 days. What is the explanation for these uh, excellent clinical results? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. And um, what you see um, in our results is a very low um, complication rate during the procedure and in the shorter term, so less than 4%. And I can speak, um, of course, only for the Lucerne um, Center. So we have undergone quite a learning curve when it comes to the femoral access management. So we use consistently ultrasound guided um, puncturing of the femoral artery. We use dedicated um, closure devices with almost immediate hemostasis in the majority of cases. And I think all these, these factors uh, translate into a very favorable, at least short-term outcome to, to one month. Yeah. And besides that, so we, we introduced um, uh, the cusp overlap technique, for example, and um, have now single digit P pacemaker rates. I think that's also additionally important, maybe also for the longer term outcome. I think we are going to move to the, um, to the last part of this, of this session uh, that is focused in patients with a small anomaly, but focused uh, especially in valve-in-valve procedures. 
uh, I think that uh, the Allegra valve uh, has several interesting aspects. Uh, those shown here in yellow uh, lead to low gradient and high effective orifice areas. These uh, uh, characteristics have been previously shown, uh, but uh, it, uh, briefly, it has a supranormal position of the valves. There is a flexible commissural fixation points. Uh, the concave form of the of the valve and also the commissure head is different for the different valve sizes. Uh, here we have a case example. It, this, uh, this is a 79 year old woman with hypertension, hyperlipidemia, uh, previously treated with uh, current antibiotic grafting and uh, surgical aortic valve replacement uh, 11 years before with a mitral flow 19 millimeters, so a small uh, biological valve, very small uh, biological valve. Now this patient has severe stenosis with uh, functional class 2 and uh, this patient was treated in our center with an Allegra 23 uh, millimeter uh, valve uh, with pre dilatation The final result showed uh, excellent uh, gradients, uh, 22, 12 maximum and mean gradients and the PVL was uh, absent after post dilatation. This patient was included in the registry we have performed in, in Spain, in, in several centers in Spain that included 29 patients uh, in which in whom uh, the Allegra valve was implanted to treat valve in, to treat degenerated biological aortic valve valves. And you can see here uh, the, the level size, the true inner diameter of the valves, and you can see how most of the cases uh, had a very small annually. Uh, in, and in fact, most of the cases were treated with the 23 Allegra valve device. And you can see here the results of these 29 patients. Um, the transvalvular gradients uh, were very low. The maximum gradient after the procedure was 17.4 millimeters of mercury, and the mean gradient after the procedure was 8.4. Uh, millimeters of mercury that I think are very, very excellent results considering that most of the cases were very small uh, biological valves. Regarding the aortic reputation, uh, after the procedure, uh, there were no cases with grade two or more uh, PVL. There were 11 cases with grade one and uh, 18 patients with no aortic reputation. Regarding the clinical results, there were no cases. Uh, with valve embolization or more than one, one valve needed. Uh, the rate of permanent pacemaker was 8.7% and post dilatation was uh, performed in 20% of cases. The vice success was obtained in all uh, except one case. This case they had a mitral flow 21 millimeter valve uh, with a 22 millimeters of mercury mean gradient after the procedure. Probably we should have cracked this valve, we didn't do it. Uh, but these are our results. Uh, we are going now to the discussion, but uh, to the take home messages, but maybe we have one question regarding the valve in valve registry. With this excellent result that showed us um, for treating um, valve in valve with Allegra, is the Allegra now your first choice in your center for valve in valve procedures? Yes, uh, actually, it's our first choice uh, valve for valve in valve procedures. We have uh, used uh, different. Um, the type of valves in these cases, but uh, currently um, we have excellent results and it is our first choice for these cases. Uh, thank you, Julian Mafias, uh, for, for sharing this, this uh, session. I think that the take home messages are first that the Allegra is designed for optimal hemodynamic performance, and this is confined, confirmed by clinical experiences in a single center as shown by Julian and the multi center data analysis. Uh, the safe implantation uh, with high technical success and low post procedural complications is possible with this valve. And finally, uh, there are good results in a small annually and degenerated by processes. So thank you very much for all the attendees. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Julian and Matthias. Uh, it has been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.